Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are on a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And how about this for something different all the way back to the very beginning, the nature boy is with us, Rick, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, you know, this is the second time I've seen you in a year, <laughs> a month ago, it was in a bar for the first time and literally I, almost a year. Yeah. And so yeah. being the second time and this third time has come this weekend for the graduation, but Anytime I can visit with you guys, I, I, I see you on all the podcasts. I see that you're supplying all the questions and answering most of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're here, we're here today, but, um, you know, we, well, I guess how we got here because we were talking about these um, uh, A&E uh, uh, yeah, the biographies. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was fun. You know, you and I get a chance to catch up every now and again. And yeah. You said, Hey man, why don't we, uh, why don't we just record some stuff and talk about it? And I thought, you know what, when the Nate wants to click record, we click record. So welcome to the pop-up show. That's what we'll call it. All right. Very cool. Well, I'm honored to be here. It's just, um, um, I just, uh, you know, it's funny because I, those are the kind of things I used to watch with you. We would go somewhere and we wouldn't yeah. miss that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be a weekend somewhere and like all the wrestling events, but, um, yeah, actually, it, when you think you know everything and you've seen everything, uh, it, 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 there's more information provided. And I thought that um, Austin's w was incredible. Um, and the thing, that if, if take all the brilliance of Steve's career away, if you just that one sentence, which I think Vince said something like that in, when he inducted uh, Steve, was what much how much money the company made yeah uh in, in from one year to another but it was like I, I can't remember but it was in other words he made a drastic change in the wwe oh yeah period. it's been said over the years i think the line is uh hulk hogan made vince mcmahon a millionaire and steve austin made vince mcmahon a billionaire yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i mean and, and that and i take um I mean, I've always thought that, knowing it, but I, you know, once again, I wasn't there for the heyday with Steve. I was on the other end in that horrible scenario that WCW was, you know, going through for so many different reasons. But, um, yeah, you know, and for me personally, you know, and I didn't take any, no, I didn't take any pleasure in this, but, you know, it's, it, 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 it goes without say. And I, I mean, even watching bookers and not seeing Randy's, but knowing it, you, you, your marriages and your personal life takes a toll. Yeah. And, you know, luckily for Steve, uh, um, you know, it's coming back around and uh, like, mm -hmm. as, as they addressed, I mean, I'm just repeating what they addressed in the bio, but he paid a price. Um, 
And the funniest thing, I mean, not funniest thing, the strangest thing, and I talk to him all the time about this, is he left the business at 38. It's unbelievable when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, literally, he left the business at 38. I mean, where, how much money would he have made and where would he have been? You, you won the like, Rumble you know, when you were like, what, 40, 41 when you won the Rumble? 41. Yeah. Too old to be in WCW. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, what he, gave me, he gave me enough time to grow my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting it off. Yeah. Hey, you, you brought up Hurd. You, uh, you had a chance to see the uh, Jim Hurd interview I did. What do you think all these years later hearing Hurd say, you know, I thought we were friends. What, what, what do you feel about Jim Hurd these days, all these years later? Well, it's not that we weren't friends. It, it's just that yeah, we were never friends. I'll, I'll, let's clarify that. But I certainly, you know, I, tr I tried very hard. I actually anticipated, um, I, I, I thought it would be good, uh, but it just, it went from, if it was Ole first and then him, I can't remember the order. No, Ole was way after, I'm sorry. That's when I came back after I lost to Perfect. Um, yeah. I You know, I don't know what to say about Jim Hurt. I just... You know, at this point in my life, I'm glad everybody is, if they're alive, they're alive. If they're happy and healthy, I'm happy for them. What about uh, Mr. Crockett? What we just call Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. And, and then, of course, I told you that I got to talk to Jimmy. Yes. Literally an hour before he passed away. That uh, That is almost as strange and and hidden a story as the Von Erich story, the whole Crockett thing. And I don't know that you'll ever get all the facts. I mean, I, I saw it break down in front of my very eyes. It's not something that you want to talk about because once again, you can't say anything negative because people are here to defend themselves, which is, um, which is sad. That's why, you know, I would never address anybody. They can't defend themselves. And at the same time, it was so sad to see this company doing so well and all of a sudden just fall down. Right. And, uh, I mean, I was there, Dave Johnson. I can remember his name. Like I'm like, I'm talking to you and Stan, uh, he had a nervous breakdown. Yeah. Go to the hospital from the office. Wow. And David Crockett's diners club credit card. David came to me in shock. You know, like I could do anything about it, but he just, you know, Dave and I were close. And his diner's club was $600,000 on it for, for air, air, airplane travel. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was just that, you know, that's how they did it. And how this company went from making what, I think, of one year, I can remember they said they made 35 or more $40 million, which is a lot of money in the 80s. Oh yeah. And then they end up selling it for nine million dollars to Turner. Just enough to cover the uh the uh, the debts and get everybody square and then they got all got a minimal salary except for uh uh Jimmy who got who made himself a a special deal, which obviously led to the dissension. Well he uh... I mean, here, I mean here, here's what's funny. Uh and this isn't talking out of school because I, I talk to Michelle all the time. Not by all the time. I mean, once every couple of months, Michelle Reynolds and I talk. And she reached out to me and said, you know, asked me about Jimmy. And she said that they, they hadn't talked, that Jimmy and Dusty hadn't talked since that since that time. Wow. When it all went down. That's what's sad. Yeah. I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five-star review after five-star review. We make it fast. We make it easy. And it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to savewithconrad.com. So it was sort of a uh, poetic, if you grew up loving the horseman and all that, that on the night he passed, yeah, FTR showed up on AEW wearing the old NWA belts and JJ Dillon's there and your old pal Tully Blanchard was in the ring, maybe for the yeah. last time. Did you see Tully's match? I did not, but I saw the highlights of this, uh, 
su- the uh, top rope, yeah. huh? A slingshot suplex. Slingshot suplex, yeah. Um, which is still one of the most uh, underrated moves. I mean, it takes timing. Yeah. Tully, Tully not being the biggest guy in the world could do that to anybody. He did it to Nikita, I think. Wow. You know, it was too, uh, easy 280, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Tully was a hell of a worker. What, do you, what can you say? He and Iron both, I mean, I've said it to you before. I've said it on, they're never going to get the credit for how good they were, really. Yeah. I, I tell you, when the credit comes along, I mean, you see a team like the kids that are there now, and I, I'm not sure what they call them now. FTR. F, FTR. Yeah. When those guys come along and they say to me, this is, what, 25 years after Iron and Wrestle that they idolized Iron and Tully. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's either YouTube, WWE Library, whatever. But, I mean, that, that's that's the supreme compliment. When two guys that can really, those guys can work. Yeah. I mean, some of the best matches today or whatever that the WWE has put on in terms of tag team matches was those guys in the Osos. Unbelievable. We started talking about the uh, biographies. And when you and I spoke the other day, you hadn't seen the Booker one yet. My gosh, how great yeah. is that Booker T story? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, I. I knew he had problems, but and Booker and I, like as you know, are very close. Yeah, but I've never asked him. I never, I never walked up to him and said so. I didn't even watch it because I didn't watch the one chronicle they did that talked about it because I, well, I think I watched him. I just have never addressed it with him. That makes sense. Yeah, because you know whatever went on then that he came out of it. Yeah, such a positive light, such a positive way. And I will say the one thing that Booker did, which was really smart, and it's not by chance, but he and Charmel met later in life, and he didn't, you know, go through multiple marriages and all that. I mean, if you went through one, the first one, he wasn't in the business. I'm not really sure, you know, how that worked out, but I mean, he's just happy on top of the game, and he's still there right now. Yeah, and 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 successful and highly thought of and respected and uh you know i'm 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 i i was thrown back and i think that's why i asked you i i, I never R- russo had run me off by then he cut my hair shaved my head <laughs> yeah that was you know and that the bury me in the desert wasn't enough he may had to make sure that they shaved my head and all that so but i didn't know that that went down that night or well, anyway i did not know that Hogan left the building with Eric. And I didn't know that Russo, I, I guess what I want to ask you, who was in charge and Russo or, or Eric? It was supposed to be like a relaunch that April. And it was supposed to be both Russo and Eric Bischoff sort of working together. And Bischoff and I have done a podcast about it before where Bischoff wasn't in town and the creative was coming back and forth by, by fax. And of course, Hogan had creative control and he didn't want to do it. And they wanted to do a different direction. And ultimately, you know, Hulk just sort of put his foot down and said, Nope, I'm not doing it. This is what it's going to be. And then you saw what happened. I mean, they wanted to go a different direction. You mean Russo? Yeah. Russo wanted to go a different direction and, and Bischoff was team Hogan as always. Yeah. Okay. I get that. So why would Jarrett lay down in the middle of the ring? I assume because Russo told him, but we're going to talk about that with Jeff Jarrett soon enough. I'm sure. But they even cut out the the, the one part with, uh, uh, Hogan afterwards, he picked up the mic and he says, uh, that this is the reason this damn company's in the shape it's in bullshit like this. And he walked out with the belt. Well, Hogan said that. Yep. Right into a live mic on pay-per-view to the crowd. Well, see, I missed all that. I was, I was gone. Apparently what year was that? 2000, July of 2000. So, and they closed in 2001, right? Yep. March of 2001. Wow. Yeah. You could tell you had sort of mentally checked out. I mean, even towards the end of WCW, like you were wrestling in, in polos and slacks. It was not typical Ric Flair, no robes, no trunks, no tights. Was that, was I still wrestling after that? Oh yeah. Yeah. You came back on the last night show and wrestled sting in a t-shirt. No, I knew I came back, but when I came back, I, I hadn't wrestled in months. And I only wrestled that match, as you know, because of Vince adamantly insisting that I wrestled Sting. Yeah. And Sting had just come off shoulder surgery, 
so had I. And he couldn't press slam me or anything. It was just, it was terrible. But he, <laughs> you know, as usual, it was an argument that I never won. It was, Shane was there on behalf of the company and, and Jerry Briscoe. But, I mean, it was the happiest night of my life. What yeah. did you guys do after that show? So, I mean, your typical old school days after the big show, you go celebrate. Now it's the last WCW show ever. Did you go to the hotel bar and roar or what was the plan? No, no, no. I went to uh, better than that. Cause you know it. I went to, um, well, we we're the, the show was at club, the Vila, right? And next door is, um, spend the same length of time. They're both still there. So uh, it, this show wasn't at Club La Vila, but if you went next door, you went to Spinnaker or Pineapple Willies, one of those. A Spinnaker. Yeah. Spinnaker. Yeah. And yeah. We, we, yeah. And uh, I remember uh, trying to figure out how to get in my room. I had to go back to the front desk five times to find my room. And and, <laughs> <laughs> and I just was so happy it was over. Oh, my God. You yeah. know, and Funny, the next day I got a call from Jim Ross. He was obviously on a car phone. He said, uh, you ready to go to work? And I said, yeah, man. And then I never heard from him for a year. Not quite a year, but not till November, right? Or September. Yeah. Happiest day of my life. You know, without that day, I just told Ariel that on his podcast. Um, without that day, without me going back there, my legacy was dead. Russo and Bischoff had killed my legacy. You'll never convince me. I cannot think of one thing they did for me that sent me into the Hall of Fame for WWE. Can you? Uh, well, I mean, if you go back to the beginning of Hogan coming in, you and Hogan happening in WCW was a big damn deal. Oh, yeah, I get that. But I'm saying that, that but it was a big deal only because I put Hogan over. Right. But if I said no. Right. Where would Randy Savage have been if I said no? Right. So it was all it was a good deal. That you will, you can disagree with me if I'm wrong. I want you to. It's a good deal only because I would put him over. Right. And and you know why I wanted to put him over? To get a new contract? No. Because I just wanted to be part of the show. Oh, there you go. I was so happy with just doing something that I didn't care who I put over and I yeah. still don't. Yeah. I was going to say, and I don't, and I don't regret it. I don't regret putting any of them over. Yeah. You used to say but, to me, uh, Conrad, I only won 16 matches, which is fun. yeah, no, no, but that's not, that's not the point. It, it, it's things like that match with Hulk, right? That I mean, Hulk turned around and told me that, uh, which I didn't know this a couple of years ago, that, that the money that that pay-per-view generated, Launch the real format to go out and become, or launch them a, a new budget. Let's say to go Reported out. Afforded them the opportunity to do nitro. Apparently, yeah. Whatever it was, Hulk, which I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't make a dime more. So, you know, I, but I didn't look at it back, and I was just so happy. And, and you know me, I wanted to go to have the match, have a great match, and go to the bar. Yeah, and have a good time. You know yeah. what I mean? And I did, and I, and I mean, I, I've, I've become more than close to Hogan. I don't, I don't, I don't regret any of that. And I'm always going to say that the promoters, the promoters are the ones that, that build the bridges. And, and, and you know, it's just, a, it's, 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 it's the nature of the beast: divide and conquer, or build the bridge, or give someone the impression you don't want to do this, or do that. And, and I won't, I, after being in the business, it'll be 50 years in November, but I got to make it to the next November. Um, it's a year away, but um, I, I can give you a, a thousand examples of where the promoter, you know, either said two different things or told one person one thing and didn't come through. I mean, it, it, it happens in business too. Not that it doesn't happen to lawyers and everybody else. You don't always get what you're promised. I get that. But you know, and you know, you know that before I went to the ring with Halloween Havoc, I had Bill, I had to have uh, Bill, uh, who was our boss then? Uh, Bill Bush. Bill Bush. I, I had to sign a contract before I went to the ring. Hmm. I wouldn't go. Did you ever hear that? 
That was uh, the retirement match in 94, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Because they called me on the phone, uh, Eric and uh, the the guy that ran all the shows back in his name. So on mine right now. Zane Bresloff. Zane. Zane called me. I was a good friend of Zane. And they they go, um, um, hey, we we need you to do something for us, right? Uh, Detroit's not selling out. Well, guess what? I told you it wouldn't. Loser leave town or loser retire. He's the champion. He's beat me twice. Okay. And I was supposed to win in Des Moines, Iowa. You know that, right? No. That all changed, right? That made sense. He beats me. I screw him. Arn came over to Tanya Harding, you make, right? But I never beat him. That changed. Yeah. Okay, fine. Arn and I went to the uh, the five star, whatever it was, and got drunk and forgot about it. <laughs> but but no, then then they come with that. This is, tickets aren't going good. No shit. Why would they? You know what I mean? So we got Mr. T, we got Muhammad Ali, we got everybody. But he wanted to retire me with no contract. Right. And he go, I go, this time, I said, I'm right here. Jim Hurt again, right? Do this, no contract. So, you know, you probably only gave me the contract because he, he, he couldn't fire me. Or, I mean, he didn't want to fire me. That makes sense? Yeah. He waited, he waited and did that later on. <laughs> so, for going to a wrestling match. So I don't know. It's all good. But anyway, the biographies have been great. And, uh, you know, life is just, I can't, I can't complain. I'm going to get to see you guys this weekend. Yeah. I sit there, I listen and, uh, you know, something else I brought up to you, which it drives me crazy is that, you know, and I just told Ariel the things that, that bother me the most sometimes is I am guilty. Like when I left, I, I said a lot of stuff in my book when I first got to, to WCW, you know, or to WWE. And I wrote that book and I did, and I was, you know, I was, I was really bitter and really upset because I went, I've landed, someone appreciates me, all the hard work, all the years. You know, it's like I told Ariel today, when you wrestle for five years and you wrestle 300 days a year, and in 280 to 300 of them are for hour. Yeah. Twice on Saturday sometimes and twice on Sunday. You can ask Ricky Morton. You can ask Steve when people are still alive. You know, you think you earn a level of respect that never will go away in this business, right? Right. And then you make friends. And then, and then social media comes along. And I see, you know, a guy like me who Bret Hart, you know, he's cracking on me again. He's cracking on Triple H again. I mean, I, I asked you, how long has that been out with that interview? Yeah, it feels like every couple of years he has another. The one just came out just recently, right? Where he covered all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny went to Vince because I didn't remember. I wasn't giving all my all in the match. Wasn't that one of them? Yeah. Yeah. And that I was repetitive in the ring. And and, and you think, why? Why? But a guy that you've made peace with, you've t- you've taken. Why is why are they always, you know, you know, telling Roman Reigns he's another Triple H, burying Triple H, burying Sean. I mean, it's old. Let me tell you this: I would have rather been double crossed and had the belt taken away from me than be buried in the desert. <laughs> All day long. Oh my God, that's the line. Tell me, or how about being put in a sand asylum? Yeah. Let's just see how we're, how far we can push the limits with them. Yeah. Right. And this is not me personal with Brett because I like him, but I don't understand why you just can't be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Kurt Angle comes along. <laughs> I love Kurt Angle, but how could Kurt Angle, who has been in the business for ten years, or what has he been in fifteen years? who I personally love and he knows it, tell the world that Bret Hart's the best worker of all time when Kurt Angle's a better worker than Bret. And I know because I work with them all. Right. What, I, what are you thinking about? I, I think that's probably just like the one that got away. You know, Kurt got to wrestle Sean. He got to wrestle you, and he never got to wrestle Bret. If, if you could go back and wrestle one person that you never got the chance, who would it be? Well, well, first of all, Kurt got to wrestle me when I was 55. That's true. Yeah. That's, he never got to wrestle me. 
Okay. Right. I wasn't go and compare myself. Shawn Michaels is the best worker in the business. Right. I mean, I don't even think was Brett ever even been in a table ladder and chair match? No, I don't think so. I don't think we ever saw him do it, right? Right. These guys like Edge and I mean and I mean whatever Sean did and I and his bio's coming out and I'm addressing that right now. It's none of my first business because I'll be the last person to ever throw stones. But what I do want to do is be able to walk into the building and not have people say, God, he's bitter, he's old, and he's gonna continue to knock people. Yeah. I, I can't I couldn't live like that. And calling Roman Reigns the next triple H and cracking on I mean how uncomfortable is it for people in the family to walk around in front of Hunter? Right. And, and Sean, who's an intricate part of the company. Yeah. And, I mean, NXT, but that's part of the company. Yeah. Right. Or, and whoever else, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lawler hit me with a chair too hard. Wow. Okay. I mean, it, it, I don't understand it, but I, you know, I, I, I don't ever want to be that lonely. Yeah. That I got to call you. I'm going to call you a bitch because of your family, right? <laughs> That's different. So we're always we're always going to drink and bitch. It's human nature. Sure. But I got nothing to bitch about, and I want like I'm going this weekend. I want to walk in the building, and and I mean, I just but on a, I feel like I can be honest when we talk on these things. Yeah. I I was concerned that uh, I had I had lost the respect of Roman Reigns because I when that whole man thing went upside down and all that, I had to file the trademark and. Oh, whatever transpired. It mean, means nothing now. I, I think people, I, I heard that, he not, and I walked right up to him. I said, can I have a minute of your time? And I said, hey, it means a lot to me. Because you you want the kids to look forward to you coming. Yeah. Not, man, here he comes again. Da, da, da. Does that make sense? Yeah. Especially when you have a daughter who's at the elite, most elite position she could be in. Yeah. Or a son, either way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you just don't want to be that person. You don't hear Bob Orton at home, and Bob was a huge star, complaining about anybody. Yeah. Talking about Randy's dad, you know what I mean? Let bygones be bygones and let it go. But I most definitely would rather have been beat by Shawn Michaels <laughs> with a submission hold than been buried in the desert or had my head shaved. How about you? Uh, yeah, I think I would, I think I agree with you. I would take that, you know, and it's yeah. important to remember on the other side of be, uh, of Sean beating you, you get the biggest contract you ever had. Brett got his biggest deal ever when he went to WCW. Oh, I know. Oh yeah. And that was after Sean beat him, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I know. And then well, I don't know what happened there. You know, he blames Eric for everything. Yeah. Eric made him rich. So I don't know how you blame Eric. I mean. I mean, I, I was talking to Eric the other day. I said, you know, it's a flavor of the week. You're mad. He's mad at Goldberg one week, mad at me the next. Something I didn't do. I was repetitive. Well, you wrestle an hour every night, 280 times, which he would know nothing about. And uh, you're going to get slammed off the top. That's called taking a bump. How many well, press did you take, Brett? None. <laughs> no, I mean, no, you, I mean, you told me about that once where you said as a kid, and I'll never forget this because the knock on you for years because of Brett had been, Oh, Rick's a routine man. And I was. And you said, Connor, yeah. when I was a kid and my dad would take me to see wrestling, I wanted to see Ray Stevens do that flip in the corner. Yeah, and sure if he didn't did. do it, I went home disappointed. And I wanted to make sure nobody was ever disappointed. I'm going to do all my shit. They see on TV every time they come see me. Yeah. Well, I see Brett, Brett knocks me for taking a slam off the top every night. So did Harley race. Yeah. Every, where do you think I learned it from? Right. Where did I learn to flip from? And when you're wrestling an hour every night, you are going to become a routine guy. Yeah. It, it just, it's just because not everybody you're working with is a Bret Hart or a Shawn Michaels or a Ricky Steamboat. Right. Yeah. There's another one that Kurt missed. He never wrestled Steamboat. Right. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I know I'm going to hear back from Kurt on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he thinks uh, he thinks Randy Orton's one of the best wrestlers of all time, and you probably agree with that. He's probably talking. Uh, I, certainly, right I certainly do. It, 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 but, but when ten years from now, these conversations you'll be having because you're just a young man with Randy, AJ, Roman, Seth, wh whoever. Yeah. You know what I mean, we'll be forgotten names. No, that's not true. 
No, no, I don't know. I don't mean forgotten. We're all going to have our places, but I'm more famous now. I mean, you could, you could, if you Google Ric Flair's most famous interviews, there's a whole bunch of them, right? Yeah. Point making is it? You know, I got football teams, hockey teams, college teams. I mean, it. You know, whatever I did, I must have done something right. For all of them. <laughs> you did somewhere along the line. Somebody got it. Yeah. Makes sense. They did. Yeah. So well, let's talk about some news that we saw a few weeks ago that caught me and you way off guard. Our old pal Mongo, he's in a fight right now, right? Yeah. Yes. I went and saw him. I'm going next Monday night too, after the graduation. They're having a big fun, not a fun, it is a fundraiser. Uh, it's called uh, Rooftop at Wrigley. Uh, it's a, a private party, but the Chicago Bear team are going to be there. I think a lot of NFL vets are going to be there. Were friends of Mongo is in. He's fighting a fight. Um, it's absolutely to know him like I know him, and I mean, he's just like you and me. And he's gonna he's gonna drink, have fun, laugh, do what he wants to do. I mean, and, and and that's who he was, and that's who he is. And on top of that, he was, you know, he's got Hall of Fame numbers, better than Warren Sapp. You know, I'll, I'm sure this will somehow get him in the Hall of Fame, but it should have been anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but and what a personality, bigger than life. But to see him uh, from the time he made that interview that aired about a month ago, mm-hmm. he, he could move his right arm. He can't move his right arm now. Oh wow. It can move his right thumb a little bit, but it's, you know, that's, I, I, I look at when I was sick and there is nothing, nothing that I, um, went through that would compare to that. You know, I'd rather, if I had the choice, because you, you know, knowing that when I sat here four years ago, I told you I used to sit here and worry every day about dying because you've almost died. Right. Yeah. You, you, all of a sudden you're aware that you're not invincible. You're, you're not invincible, which I always felt like I was, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I can't imagine what goes through his mind every day sitting there knowing that he's he's you know, it, it he's got a, a life sentence. It, it's gotta be in and, and, and he still was telling jokes and upbeat and smiling and Maybe promise I do a keg stand with him at the, at the party, which I will. <laughs> Against doctor orders. <laughs> By the way, if you're listening to this and you want to donate, go find uh, Team Mongo on GoFundMe.com. Yeah, two hundred thousand dollar goal as Rick and I are recording. They're about one seventy nine. So every little bit helps. It goes straight to benefit Mongo's uh, recovery. So it's Team Mongo on GoFundMe.com. Something else that's in the news lately, Rick, uh, dark side of the ring. Have you seen that? The, uh, Brian Pillman episode, you know, I went to the funeral, so I, I have not seen that. Tell me what, 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 what's up with that. Well, you just get to see more of his personal life. You get to catch up with Melanie and his sister, Linda, and you get to see all the kids. Yeah, No, I haven't seen that. Uh, um, I'll tell you this. Um, Brian was one of those guys that when I, he would call me <laughs> at two in the morning three in the morning and he would say to me um you got the power leave hold them up i mean i can't even remember what it was it was was almost like it wasn't the same guy that i met right when he first came i mean just incredibly handsome great physique working son of a gun right i mean just this the best uh you know and i don't know what happened along the way you know, it's kind of like when I people will tell me, uh, you know, Sting, and I'm not bringing up something that he hasn't addressed. But I had no idea that um, some of the guys that were taking pills were taking pills or doing whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because I it just wonder what, I, you know, that we're all looking for a way to decompress. You know, for me, it was booze, and everybody has their own different Ferrari Piper. Uh, and they didn't buy it. I'm really upset too with them. I had to send them an email. Andy did not tell one Roddy Piper Rick Flair story. <laughs> <in his bio. laughs> do, do you want to tell the uh, Puerto Rico story? No, nah, I'll tell you that one. 
<laughs> hey, hey, when I, when I hear the kid is gone, I will. <laughs> oh, I know it's one you're talking about. I was talking about the spittoon. What, what you were thinking of? Oh, that's not for Red Santa Domingo. I wrote that uh, in my book. Well, catch everybody up in case they didn't read the book. Okay, so I used to wrestle a lot in the Puerto Rico area, that territory. As a matter of fact, a lot of people did. The big, the big cards down there were the Road Warriors, the Funks, myself, Brody, Hanson, et cetera, et cetera. But the main event guys, me being the world champion, Brody and Hanson being huge, um, yeah, everywhere they went, basically. And um, so while I was there in Puerto Rico, Carlos said to me, do you want to go to San Domingo this Sunday? next Sunday and wrestle uh, Jack Veneno. Well, you don't need a passport in, in, in Santa Domingo. And he said, the guy goes, you're going to gonna pay a $5,000 U.S. And I go, yeah, well, I got nothing else to do. I don't have to be anywhere until West Palm Beach Monday. And uh, um, so I get to the airline, airport, Eastern Airlines, and you don't need a passport to go to Puerto Rico. Yeah. You, you may now. You didn't back then. You don't. So I, I go and I get um, to the gate and the guy goes, where's your passport? And Carl says, where's your passport? I said, I didn't bring it. Well, I never do. So they I back off. They they grease the guy at the gate. I got on a plane. Okay, now I'm not even thinking I got to get home. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I go down there, get there and... Uh, and only and and uh, the only one that went with me, Carlos didn't go. The invader went, um, Jose Gonzalez. But he took off and left me with George Napolitano, who's still living. George can tell the story. So we're on top of the Sheridan Hotel, probably ten floors up. And George says, "Come look out the window here." And I look out the window, and they have a bridge in Santa Domingo, which is a city. I mean, which in the city, and there were literally. If there was one, there was 30,000 people. This guy is, this guy, five foot nine. He just passed away recently, by the way. Five foot nine, running across the bridge, training to wrestle me that night. Little tiny guy. So I go, God, the people are really with it. And they're chanting, Dad, I couldn't. Of course, it's Spanish, so I didn't understand. And uh, we get to the building, and they have sold I guess twice, maybe three times as many tickets as the building would hold, 10,000 people. So they're having a riot outside. We're going, nobody spoke in English. And so uh, Gonzalo was coming back and forth trying to go. They wanted me to do what we call a Broadway, a, a draw, right? Yep. But they wanted him to have me in his finish, which was a sleeper, raise the arm one, two, and the bell rings as my arm is going down at three. Okay? No problem. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Full scale riot. They thought he won the title. So the, the people are jumping in the ring trying to carry him around. Well, the referee goes to give me the title. I said, hey, I, I don't want it, man. Give it to him. It was a hot potato. He gave it to me. I gave it back to him. He gave it to me. I gave it back to him. <laughs> they, I mean, literally, they beat the only, like I said, Gonzalez came and got me because I wouldn't have fallen in the aisle. But we got the shit beat out of us walking back to the dressing room. Let's say it's 25 or 30 yards, right? So now I leave the building without the title. Go back, get the title, celebrate all night long. And of course, I go to the airport with them and I go to my gate and they go, because I'm going to Miami go to West Palm, right? They're going back to San Juan. And I go down, and the guy goes, where's your passport? I went, oh, my God. So I barely caught those guys. They were walking out on the ramp to walk up a staircase. This is before, before uh, jetways, right? Yeah. And I caught those guys. I said, I, got, I can't go back to uh, the United States. I need a passport from here. So we walked back off, and they greased the guy, get me on the plane. Back to Puerto Rico, boom, gone. Got the belt back. So dumb me. Of course, Carlos calls me and says that they want you to come back for a rematch. And I said, I only, I only go over and take Piper to get that back. <laughs> so Piper, we get there. 
this, this, these are the stories that if they can't be made up. Piper's back is killing them. <laughs> he said, I need some pain, something for the pain. So nobody speaks English. And I said, I'm not lying to you. And I swear this doctor, he, he, he was a veterinarian. He brought in a syringe, like one of these, like the guy with a penicillin for a cow or something. Yeah. <laughs> He stuck that, that 16 or 18 gauge needle of Piper's ass and shot for that. Within an hour, Piper couldn't feel anything. So it's, uh, <laughs> and it's hard to get Piper down. So I was laughing. It made, it's the only thing that could make me laugh because it was crazy outside. So Piper goes, well, I'm going to be here. I'm going to carry the American flag. So out we go, him carrying the flag and making it even worse. Sure. The finish. The finish. <laughs> he hits the rope, Piper trips him down. He goes, boom, I cover him. <laughs> oh, God. It was even worse than before. I mean, they killed Piper. That's 16, 17, 18. How are 18 changes, right? So now we go. They finally get us out of the building, which they've literally almost dismantled. And they give me a check for five grand, and, and they gave Piper a spittoon full of cocaine. He looked like Chevy Chase on Modern Problems, <laughs> and five hundred bucks. <laughs> My gosh! And I swear to God, he, you know that when remember Chevy Chase going around the bed, right? Yes. He had that ring around his nose. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Christmas time, man. And me and him fly back, and we got our passports, fly back into Miami, and um, the Briscoes are coming back. We see them in the hallway, tackle them. They, they stretch us both. And uh, Jerry is still living. He can tell the story. The pipe Brian get home on that plane, and we drink all the way. We've been up all that drink all the way in shower. We're, we're back in coach. <laughs> and Piper's singing jingle bells. And the flight attendant came three times. And <laughs> she leaving Piper and started singing again. So finally the captain came back and said, you guys say one more word. <laughs> I'm going to land the plane. You'll be out here. This is way before air marshals. And all right. That, as was a lot of our travel. <laughs> so... We got to, we walked off and there was Kitty and Beth and man. <laughs> but, you know, it is one of those stories that you, you can't duplicate it. You can't tell it. You can't make it up. If but you've it, never seen the uh, Jack Vanino story, go find it on YouTube. There are clips out there of your excursion with Jack Vanino. He was the little guy you were talking about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah really guess, who, guess who was sitting in the audience? Who? Guys like Albert Pujols. Really? Yeah. And, and uh, what's the, the, uh, Pitcher's name that um, but so famous from Boston. I uh, met him at, at those signings that you and I, have, you know, I've taken when you would. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there's, with all the baseball players that uh, the kid that threw always pitched against the Yankees and Clemens for Boston was so good. Well, in other words, oh, uh, but Martinez. Yeah, yeah, Pedro. Yeah, yeah, those. Yeah, so there's so many of those kids that are from. Uh, Santa Domingo uh, that are in, in baseball today. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Um, um, but anyway, it, it's it's nice over the years to think seeing Albert Pohl was waving to me. I was throwing the ball out for, for the Cardinals once a long time ago when he was still with the Cardinals. And he he said, I see you, amigo. You know what I mean? So Veneno li literally was, he was a legend in that country. He was Michael Jordan of Santa Domingo. Speaking You're of... Rick uh, Blair of North Carolina. <laughs> speaking of amigos uh one of our amigos is uh going to be in triple mania taking on kenny omega how excited are you for la sombra uh, aka the former andrade to be back on the scene man oh when is that it's, it's happening this august it's like the the mexican wrestlemania if you will oh fantastic i did not know that i knew that he was is, is, is alberto de Rey in that match alberto I think that's a different event, but yeah, he's got two matches announced right now. I think. Oh, okay, wow. I, I I didn't know. I, I knew he was wrestling Alberto somewhere. I did not know about that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, he's he's a great worker. Yes, you he know. Is. 
Yeah, he. I mean, he's special. Um, you know, it, it, I just wish. Um, well, it, it, it's hard because the interview is so important. You know, what I mean, and that's yeah. into his business. It, it, and it in no way is a reflection on how good some of these wrestlers are that have a problem with uh, with the interviews. But I mean, I'll give you a classic example of something that's really great right now. As I always said, Cesaro had nothing. You know what I mean? For years. Yeah, great worker, but he wasn't colorful. He wasn't, you know. And finally, the creative people have seen that you don't have to be, not everybody's going to be going da da da. I mean, and, and he's come out and his interviews have been solid, good. They don't have to have bling on them. And his work is is incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really I is. Mean, I mean, Cesaro is a great worker. Yes. That's a word that's passed along way too often. You know what I mean? So yeah. he's been good for a long, long time. I'm glad he's finally getting a shot. For, forever. I can yeah. remember five years ago they were saying, Well, what are we gonna do? I mean, you can't talk, he's kind of bland and you know, I, I've texted him, he's just doing a phenomenal job. He is. And, and you know, sometimes it just sometimes you just you you wear him out. You know, anybody that's adversarial, you wear him out by being so damn good. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. What do you think we'll see for uh, Daniel Bryan? The rumor is his WWE contract has expired and he's got options. What would you be uh, interested in seeing him do? He didn't have an option. He was going to go home with Bree. <laughs> that, 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 that's so that's so speculation. He's one of the nicest kids I've ever met in the business. And he would no more leave the WWE than... No, no. I, I, I would have a very difficult time believing he would leave the WWE. If he does, I'd be very surprised. I mean, every oh, that whole family, everybody is tied to the WWE. Sure. I mean, and it's, um, you know, I, 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 I was under the impression he wanted to go home and spend more time with the kids. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what he's going to do. He's a, hey, whatever he does, I wish him the best. He's a great worker. Um, and, and just being very honest with you, I did not think, or I said that before I've gotten in trouble, that at his size, he could make a difference, but he has. Yes, he did. He, he's made a difference despite his size, and he's and he really is a hell of a hand. Were you surprised to see uh, Samoa Joe leave WWE? I, I don't I don't know enough about that to even give you an intelligent comment. I, I didn't know. Uh, is he injured? I don't even know why he left or why. They, they gave him his release, right? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but he was one of my favorites, and I'm excited to see what he does next. And yeah, I'm, I'm also glad to hear that uh, your old pal Johnny Ace is back. You had a lot of fun times with Johnny over the yeah, years. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, hey, you know, it's the toughest job in the world. It's like being a part of you. Like, it's like you obviously because you have you have in the past. I think your mom and dad are retired now, but it's tough to have your friends working for you or your family. Yeah. Because you know, somewhere along the line, they're going to have a vision that's different than yours. Yeah. And ultimately, you're going to say, "Hey, this is not what I got in mind." Yeah. You know, or in the same would apply. And when they hired John, they brought him back because things had gotten out of control. You know, in some cases, the talent was you know basically trying to tell. You know the promotion, not Vince to his face, but trying to run the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And John is a—he's as diplomatic as he can be, he's as nice as he can be, but John can be tough. And he learned that by booking over in Japan, right? You know what I mean? It's just when he got the—he got the WCW too late. If he got into WCW earlier, the company there's a very good chance that the company might have, because he would have, if he was involved in creative, he would have not put up with any of that crap yeah you know i mean people have you can't go out and have a two-minute match with twenty thousand people because you don't like to finish you know what i mean it's just so many things that were wrong you know but you, at the end of the day you cannot blame anybody which is just going to be the bottom line forever it's how it's greatest line it's not about who's the best worker it's about who makes the most money yeah Best worker, being the best worker is always just going to be a. Uh, it's always just going to be a conversation. Banking the most money is it's a fact. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, he's replacing, of course, uh, Mark Carano, a guy that you uh, have had a lot of fun times with over the years. Yeah. I know he's kind of a controversial figure right now, but you hate to see anybody ever lose their job. Do you think Mark has got wrestling out of his system now, or would you be surprised to see him come I, I, back? I'm going to tell you, I've reached out to him three different times and haven't heard a word back. So I basically have no comment. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I can't, in front of the bottom of my heart, believe that he was ever malicious. I, you know, who knows? Sometimes the job just gets too tough for too long. Well, it, I mean, look, it, 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 I think it it drove it drove Jim crazy. Yeah, and and Jim dealt with it when when it was really tough for a lot of egos. I mean, yeah, you got Steve, you got The Rock, you got Hunter, you got Sean. I mean, a lot of different egos in the clubhouse. <laughs> you know what I mean, well, and down well, here, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just saying it, it's it, 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 uh, it it's a, a thankless job. You just got to try and walk out the door, and, and the only thing you can do is try and be as honest with him as you can be. You know, and if you don't have the answer, you say I don't know. You know, which is what a, a smart person will say. It's above my pay grade. Yeah, that's that's people's answer now. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> so somebody uh, who uh, really did a great job recently and was universally praised. You were up on years ago, Mr. Bad Bunny. Boy, he stole the show at WrestleMania, didn't he? Yeah, he he did great. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. You know, I I I talked to him before and after and he was nice enough to participate in that um A E special that you're in that will be on. It's gonna air Father's Day. So Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be maybe we'll get a chance to watch that together somehow. But yeah, he's in that and he was nice enough to take a time out of his schedule. Um, and you know, kind of the story of how we met and everything, which is strange enough at WrestleMania at Raw Reunion. Um, but it was great, and we had a and we've been friends ever since. And uh, you know, he had me at the um Latin, the Latin Awards, remember a couple years ago? Yeah. You had the all white suit, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I had just I had just gotten out of the hospital like six months prior to that, so but he's just a great guy, and uh. Yeah, it's the guys that think that it climb that ladder and reach that level of success that you know, those are the ones that, that you really have, have a lot of time for because they don't forget you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like I can call Darius who's and I and it doesn't matter what people think that Darius' song Wagon Wheel is the fifth most popular song in the history of country music. Oh wow. I and know that, that. that is a lot to say. Yes, it is. And I can call Darius, and he did A&E, too. Uh, offset, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about WrestleMania. It's the first time sort of post-COVID that wrestling fans were together again. You were there. What was it like to be at a wrestling show with fans again? Well, I went the second night. It was great. God, it was fabulous. And, you know, and, and I mean, I thought it was as good a WrestleMania as I've seen. Yeah. All the matches were good. I mean. They didn't have a bad match on the card either night. Yeah. You know, some were better than others, but they didn't have a bad one. I mean, everybody got to enjoy the feeling of a live crowd. And above all else, I know that I want people are always going to say, well, that, that guy, he just always is interested in that. Everybody on Sunday night, everybody came out afterwards. Yeah. I don't mean Vince or Stephanie or Hunter. You know, but I, I can assure you wherever they were in their suite or some restaurant they rented, everybody, everybody celebrated because they made a statement. Yeah. You know, and that went towards another step forward to other events opening up. More people. I mean, it, 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 they, you know, it wasn't like they were rolling the dice, but, you know, the Super Bowl, they did it right. But our WrestleMania show, that show that the company put on, was it blew the Super Bowl away if you're looking for spectacular. Yeah. And because the Buccaneers dominated so much, I I feel like the people got more for the money. And I'm a football fan too. So you know that I'm a huge fan of Tom Brady's and everybody else. But the WrestleMania was phenomenal. And the people got got their money's worth. And at the end, 
the kids got together. It was fun. I mean, I, I saw Rob Van Dam walking around. He was drinking like hell. And I said, this is why you need to stick to the weed, man. Calm down. <laughs> 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 we're uh we're on the heels of uh the nfl draft which is one of your favorite uh football days of the year yeah. trevor lawrence number one overall what do you expect and they just signed tebow down there too how about that yeah boy they're getting killed for it too they are getting killed for that i don't know well first of all um i am i don't know trevor lawrence um but if he lives up to half the hype it's going to be great uh, it gives that organization a lot of uh, a lot of notoriety. Um, I'm not a big fan of Urban Myers, only because he was Ohio coach at Ohio State, and I'm always saying, "I can't stand Ohio State." <laughs> <laughs> I can remember Woody Hayes tripping that player from Clemson years ago. <laughs> Some of the hell's this? No, but you know, I, I I I do like Urban Meyer. I did. I met him in a keep Cleveland Cavalier game. He's a nice guy, but in sports, you got you know, it's got to be good guys or bad guys. Absolutely, he's a heel. So, um, he knows. He's it. a heel. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, so um, I don't know. They just fired four four of their coordinators two last week too. So they're really shaking things up down there. It's crazy down there. But, it, yeah, it, it was crazy in Atlanta a few weeks ago. I think the biggest heel in sports right now is Jake Paul and you were Oh there. man that was unbelievable what a time i had unbelievable um yeah i got to, i got i got to meet um well i finally got to meet uh, de la hoya oh well, that's who, cool you had that great uh, yeah 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 i'm going to uh, he invited me he's got a fight coming up pretty soon too <clears throat> i'm not sure i'm going to go but i am going to go i met conor mcgregor's manager and i go um Jesus Christ, tell that kid to quit stealing my stuff, you know. <laughs> time I turn around and... <laughs> he goes, he knows me. He said, he knows you're the OG. I said, well, I'm going to remind him if he doesn't. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, but I just, um, I texted Dana for tickets that I haven't heard about. I have, oh, it's been three days ago. I haven't heard back. What do you think that means? <laughs> <laughs> I go, Dana. Uh prices on that issue. I still haven't heard from them. But I put thank you. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, there's, I heard they sold out in a matter of minutes. Oh, seconds, I think. I mean, it's going to be a record. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how about my man, my boy, Michael Chandler, Saturday night? Oh, how about that? Who you got? You going Chandler? Yeah. Well, um, Ariel told me we're not supposed to, he's not allowed to pick a favorite because the guys come back on you. <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah, I'm full of a Chandler. He's got that 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 with a tear in your eye thing. And, he, you know, Ariel was focusing on him. Was that real? I said, you have no idea. Nobody wrote that down for me. Nobody said it with a tear in my eye. I was so happy because I knew that they were watching. Yeah. <laughs> to stick it up their ass. And it was not sticking it up the boys' ass because the people understand now they fired me. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to drop the belt to Barry. You're fired. Okay. That that really made a lot of sense. Give the belt to Barry. Barry goes. I leave. Nope, not him. He had to have his way. And it's documented. Ross knows it. Yeah. Jim Corden knows it. Yeah. What What about uh Floyd? You, you saw the little pull apart Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather coming up, yeah. and Nate got himself involved. What mm -hmm. do you think of these exhibition fights as a whole? I mean, it's not the boxing well, figure up on. Well, you know, but I'm watching it now because I didn't realize it, that these are grossing, thanks to you, that they're some of the biggest grossing pay-per-views as of late, right? Yeah, they are. Absolutely. What Wasn't the one with Mike Tyson and... Uh, and um, Roy Mike, Jones was huge, yeah. But Roy was huge, yeah. So is this an exhibition? The one with De La Hoya is not an exhibition, though, is it? I, I just imagine at his age it will be an yeah. exhibition. I can't imagine uh, it being a sanctioned fight. Yeah, well, here's the thing about the Jake Paul thing. The kid must be, you know, must be half tough. Yeah. I mean, Mayweather's not a big heavy puncher, so, you know, I'm sure Mayweather will point him in that, but, you know, I don't know what kind of shape Floyd's kept himself in. I mean, that, there's a lot of tangibles. That I, I didn't realize, so I'm there. I'll tell you a great story. The, the kid that wrestled or that fought Jake Paul in Atlanta. Ben Askren. Yeah, Ben Askren. Okay. Yeah, 
he wrestled at Wisconsin, right? Mm-hmm. And his brother, and he and he's a national champion. He's legit. He's tougher than shit. Two time yeah. national champion. So I didn't know till the night of the fight, maybe an hour before, that wrestling wasn't allowed. Because I'm thinking he's gonna just kill this kid. This kid's a two time national champion, MMA. Yeah. I didn't know they they just had the box. Right. So and sure he got killed. So um you know, I just think that I don't think Jake will knock the kids got to be pretty tough, but I don't think that he's afraid of, of Floyd because Floyd is, you know, known as a, is a, is a, uh, you know, is more of a uh, counter puncher and, yeah. Yeah, and speed and, and technician. And I, and I think not being afraid of him is half the battle. To finish your story about uh, Ben Askren going to college and, and the camps he went to with his brother and who else was there besides his brother. Oh, I'm sorry. His brother went, went, went to uh, Reed, went to Japan with Reed and that all Team USA to wrestle against the kids from Japan. How cool is that? Yeah, I mean, unbelievable. What a small world. He, and he came up to me and said, I just wanted to tell you, my brother was on that same team. And it was me with Dick Byers with the Destroyer, from, a wrestler from yesteryear. And, uh, and we went over there. I took Reed with a guy named Mike Chase. and was a 15 day father son trip like none other 12 years old yeah it was it was the best <laughs> you know and, and really to, for to see japan like that we stayed it was called what homestays like we would travel on trains during the day trains at night to get the different talents for these tournaments and we would stay with the home in the homes of the other wrestlers that's cool the, the, the kids with their families that's sleep very cool. the floor and drink and eat and it was just a phenomenal time here's what i know you're on tv every time i turn the tv on car shield you're the official spokesperson now are you not? yeah jim Cornette's making fun of my commercials wait till i see him <laughs> <laughs> i had to pull the key to off him one time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's lucky i'm in a good place man everything's coming together so and getting to see you and Megan this weekend is going to be really special for me. Well, let's, I can't wait. For let's that. brag about your household. Uh, Wendy's probably uh, bittersweet because now the uh, the baby's fixing to fly, fly the coop, so to speak. And and you guys have kids yes. scattered all over the country in prestigious colleges. Let's brag on them here for a minute. Yeah. Well, I raised my third family. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. If you look at it, basically, because I've I've been here nine years since they were so small. Sophia is going to graduate, summa cum laude, from Georgia. She's number one on the list um, uh, with the FBI, and the government's not hiring right now, that, that particular branch of the government. And she's got other job offers, but um, and she's just going to sit and wait for the right one because she's so qualified right now. But uh, as COVID gets more under control, um, we all know that the world is starting to open up again. I'm sure that she'll be with the FBI. That, that's her goal. And um, she, and she's already, you know, been accepted, basically. It's just a hiring process now. She's had the interviews and all that. So um, now, and uh, Sebastian will be a sophomore at, um, he took a semester off, be a sophomore at Auburn. Mm-hmm. And uh, Paris is now a last semester of her, Freshman year at Gainesville, which so I'll make it loud and clear right now. I just did for Ariel. I'm going with Dan Mullen and the Gators because this coach over here, Kirby Smart, is not smart enough to call the name. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, Kirby Smart is not smart enough. So my days, and I've already made it clear to Herschel. <laughs> so the best. Yeah, no, it's just in, in college football. Football period just makes the world a better place. It's like wrestling. What if they took wrestling away? What would we do? What would you do? Think I, about it. I don't know. I guess I'd just go sell mortgages, but how fun would that be? No, you know? but I meant now that you've gotten involved in it at this level and, and you've, you know, you've done all that and you've got people running your mortgage company, what would you do without wrestling? What would all of us do? Yeah, we'd be bored. That's for sure. Yeah, really bored. And we wouldn't be able to sit and, and knock anybody else. <laughs> well, we're not going to be bored this week. 
or, or defend ourselves against. <laughs> yeah, defend ourselves sometimes, that's for sure. But this yeah. weekend, there's going to be some defending going on at WrestleMania Backlash. And uh, somebody we both think a lot of has another title shot. Rhea Ripley. 14 uh, times. 14 <laughs> times. 14 times. That's fun, man. You excited about this? I mean, that, that's a hell oh, of I'm fun. going. I'm going. I love it. Yeah, I'll be with you probably until about 3 a.m. Saturday night. I'm going to get up and go to Florida, uh, go to Florida and uh, see her in Tampa. And uh, always great just to. I mean, I try to tell these kids that, and this would apply, maybe you can do the math for me as we figure out what we have to edit out of this. But to think that she has been, I, t I told Sasha this too, but they, they didn't start out low. They came in on top. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. They didn't leave NXT and start at the bottom. They left at NXT and start at the top. Yeah. So to think that she and Sasha and well, Becky, Becky, and, Bailey. Bonnie, and, Becky yeah. and Bailey, yeah, I would say those right there have been on top for five or only is it six years now? Six years, yeah. Six years on top. Yeah. The only guys can say that. Not a lot. No, but really think about it. Randy Orton can say it. Yeah. Right. It's all about on top of the WWE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roman can say it now. Mm -hmm. Seth can say it. Yeah. AJ, but yeah. not has, he, has AJ been there five years now, six years? It's close to five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, it's 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 just it's just a handful. Yeah. It's a to lot. be over the five or six years and be on top, and not go back and be repackaged and redone and stuff. Uh, you know, everybody's got time off for medical stuff. But when you don't have to come back, repackage and different music and to just come back is just yourself. She will always be the queen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sasha will always be the boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I, and I tell those kids, you don't understand how special that elite group is. There's a lot of people that go into Hall of Fame. There is no, no marker for how long you can stay on top. And how great that makes you just at a different level to be on top in, in what is really a very, very, very competitive situation. Well, uh, before we get out of here, I want to mention it was, uh, it was pretty competitive a few weeks ago when, uh, my local HBC, the Alabama A&M Bulldogs were in the SWAC championship. Woo! And they won. They're the champs now. And Coach Maynard cut a promo afterwards on ESPN2 uh, doing all of your old stuff, man. So yeah, how yeah. about that? Even in spring ball, people are quoting Ric Flair when they win a championship. Well, I'm thankful. You know what I told I just said to um, – well, I, I'm, I'll say it to you. I just – I'm lucky. All that crap that I thought of at 4 in the morning or 3 and came off the street to Buckhead to make – you know, I'm so I'm glad that people um really it's people like you in your industry, the WWE with the library, YouTube. I mean, just since you and I've met, you become the, the master of YouTube. I mean, <laughs> you know I mean, I mean, it, I mean, I'm just I'm just being honest. I mean, you went from being the host with me or whatever where we were to really running your own your 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 your, your podcast one now. I appreciate you saying or, that. Or the, I guess, I mean, you tell me you're the rival, right? Yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, know, I know that they're more diversified probably than you are from different kinds of people, but it, it, for what you're doing, is there anybody better or bigger? Well, I don't know that we can leave on a higher note than that. How about that? Hey, you know what, yeah, though? I mean, everybody's doing their thing and they're doing good. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think, Kurt met, took a couple too many chair shots and we'll get him straightened out. Next time you talk to him, <laughs> tell him I'm available to come on. <laughs> Straighten him out about the Bret Hart stuff. Oh, absolutely. Jesus. Come on. Can't live with that. Good you Lord. know, you, I got, uh, I got you more trademark sayings than he's got world titles. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. You said a minute ago, all that stuff I used to think up at three and four in the morning. I'm lucky that uh, people liked it. 
You used yeah. to sing a little song about uh, throwing a coat in the corner. Play us out, Rick. Sing us a little song. All right, I'm on with Conrad Thompson. It will be in Atlanta Saturday night. We'll be dancing all night. We'll be dancing a little longer. We'll be staying all night. We'll be staying a little longer. My God, if the girls are lucky enough to be with us and they're smart, they'll take off the dresses. They'll throw them in the corner. Well, they'll stay a little longer. Woo! I love you, man. See you this weekend. 16 times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You're the best. Thanks, dude. Was that the diamond cutter or was that DX? That's DX. We'll go with it, though. <laughs> Five times. <laughs> the best, man. <laughs> this was fun. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Woo! Hell, ain't gonna stick to amateur wrestling, will you? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Who's gonna be in more trouble when this airs, me or you? Why would he put himself down like that? <laughs> <laughs> Not like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're too much. <laughs> Bye. See you, buddy. See you in a couple days. Okay, man. God bless. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.